Hello. This doesn't have anything to do with politics. At, as of this recording, <clears throat> it's at the beginning of April. Crikey, what is this? April the 3rd. And it looks <coughs> like Britain is in such a state of chaos. We're pretty close to civil war, at least within Parliament at the moment. And I have no idea what's going on. But at the moment, it looks like Theresa May is trying to reach some sort of accommodation with Jeremy Corbyn. That's really serious because they are almost a Nazi party right now. And I can't imagine what's going through Theresa May's mind at the moment. So while we work out what uh, it's quite possible that the <clears throat> members of parliament will rise up to, uh, to oust her, it's... It's that serious. So while we all watch in frozen horror at that, I thought I'd talk about something else because it's something I've been thinking about for a while. And I'm just, it's to do with the way society is developing. It's nothing to do with actual events going on right now, except for one thing. This. Oh, hang on, let's get it in front. Ah, here we are. This, which is at the moment updating itself. You see this? It's my mobile phone, as you will have realised. My husband bought it for me for my birthday nearly two years ago. It was very expensive at the time and it's now worth an awful lot to me, seeing as it contains a lot of useful information. But if I tried to sell it, I get next to nothing for it. The thing is that in a previous generation, my, if my husband wanted to give me an expensive present, that noise, by the way, is the dog knocking his bone around on the floor. <coughs> if my husband wanted to give me an expensive present, it would be, a, well, I don't know, a diamond, a bracelet of some sort, earrings, a, a fur coat, something like that. Okay, so just a minute, I'm just going to go off and start talking about middle class poverty, which seems to be a big thing at the moment. People are talking about it a lot. You see, people talk about the middle class, the middle classes and middle class respectability uh, as if it were once you'd achieved it, um, as if it was set in stone. You got your job as a bank clerk, for instance. You went to work every day. You went up the promotional ladder and retired at the age of 65 with a modest pension. And you were comfortable all your life. But it doesn't work like that now, does it? There's always that extra expense we have. Perhaps in America it would be an operation, in Britain maybe a personal catastrophe of some sort or a child who needs financial help or an investment that went wrong, uh, something like that. So look, I'm not talking about poverty-stricken people, I'm talking about the sort of people we regard as being relatively secure, solid members of society, professional people, skilled craftsmen, that sort of thing. Uh, and, and here we have this extra expense that suddenly comes out of nowhere. Uh, what would such people have done in previous times? This is the dog. By the way, here we are. Dog. See? Okay. What would we have done uh, in previous times if, if, if uh, people like that suddenly needed a little extra cash? Well, the first thing would be to sell or pawn that diamond bracelet bought in earlier times, better times. Marilyn Monroe sang about diamonds being a girl's best friend. She wasn't talking about them being pretty to look at. She was talking about their resale value as her old age pension when she loses her looks in the end. We also use the expression selling the family silver because people had silver teapots and candlesticks and things like that, which looked nice in the house, but which were also useful as trade items in times of necessity. So what do people have to sell nowadays? Well, you can spend two or three thousand pounds on a new computer and six months later, you'd be lucky to get rid of it for 500. 
you can buy a car for £20,000 and it can have all the latest gadgets and possibly even drive itself into the car park. Although that would probably be more like £30,000. Uh, it's a long time since I bought a car. And that's no mean sum. And it may be gorgeous and smell all new and cruise itself up the motorway and all the rest. But the minute you take it out of the dealer's car park, it's worth half of what it was worth just before you bought it. In other words, nearly everything we possess nowadays that we spend most of our money on it are worth nothing, nothing at all, or at least very little to anyone else. I think this is just about the first time in the modern history of human society that such a situation exists. Jewellery and pottery and fine materials, embroidered linen, precious lace, have always been passed down through the generations. Specialist tools of the trade as well, like carving implements and routers and hand drills uh, belonging to skilled craftsmen, they've been passed down through generations because the design has changed very little in hundreds of years. But now, well, I had an electric drill, you know. Uh, it's made by Bosch. It was a good one, quite pricey at the time, uh, the time I bought it, about 15 years ago. And when we moved house... I left it in the old place because it, well, it was a plug-in drill and I wanted a cordless drill now. And the next generation of electric drills will probably, I don't know what, have laser sights and <laughs> float in the air and drill their own holes while I hold a remote control and just direct it. You see what I mean? And then that one will become obsolete because that's the word, obsolete. All the stuff we're using our money that we're expending our resources on, they all become obsolete quite quickly. It used to be a car became obsolete after about 20 years, but now things become obsolete within a couple of years. This is a whole new world. And yeah, no, maybe some economists might have written about this, but in general, we're not doing that much thinking about what effect this is having on our economic structure on our domestic economy, economics, on, on our everyday economics. Not the national stuff, just the way we live our lives. And I'm quite sure that part of the difficulties people are having when we're talking about middle class poverty, apart from the problems we run ourselves into with credit cards, which is also something new in society, uh, but we don't have any buffers anymore. We don't even have family around us that we used to have because people move and we don't have the material assets which people used to have to help tide them over. Uh, and now, actually, I do have some valuables from my parents, but my own children have will have fewer. They have fewer now and they'll have fewer as my assets are uh, divided after I've died and then their children will have even fewer because we're not spending our money on silver cutlery anymore. Who wants to polish silver anyway? In general, this I, I, I can foresee that this is going to be a more serious social problem than anything we've come across before because in effect this is putting us back into a sort of high-tech subsistence society where we really are only four meals from catastrophe. Well, it's something to, <laughs> something happy to think about, isn't it? Uh, while we uh, while we consider the the chaos that's going in, <clears throat> going on right now in the Houses of Parliament. He doesn't care. You don't care, do you? <laughs> Let's close this down. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe, and if you wish to donate, click the subscribe star link where you can make a one-off payment or set up a regular contribution, or I have a PayPal account at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.